Hello everybody, I am Jeffrey Hauser. Today I'm going to talk about Angular and some approaches to pop open new windows. Um, first, I'm going to go into our workflow and examine that. So, a typical scenario, a workflow for an Angular application, one that requires a login and authentication, is for the app to load check to see if the user is logged in, often through a JWT or other sort of login token. Um, not there, redirects to the login service, and often your login service will integrate with some third party. So we're going to redirect to an identity provider. The identity provider is going to do whatever it needs to do to authenticate that user. It's going to redirect back to our login service, which will validate the user has access. Um, pass a token back to the UI and then the user is allowed to use your application. There is a potential problem with this workflow. In that case, what if the user is using the application, leaves it open overnight, so they're logged in, they come back the next morning, their token has expired, they make changes, and whammo, they can't um, save them because their login token is expired. So there's a handful of different ways to address this. I'm actually going to go over um, one of them in this session and another. We want to follow the same workflow, but we want to do so without actually reloading that application. So we can either do that login flow inside an iframe, if that's allowed, or we can do it over a opening a new window or a new tab. And today I'm going to look into the iframe approach. Okay, so I am sitting at code now. I've cr already created in the background a default Angular application with the Angular CLI, and I have the main app component set up. We're gonna set up two routes for the purposes of this, one route for basically the main application, and another one for the login redirect. But first, let's set up the iframe. So, we're going to set up an iframe, just a HTML thing. Um, we are going to give it a source, and this is going to be an Angular variable. So iframe URL, something we haven't created, but we will. Um, and we are going to determine whether we want to display it. So display iframe. We're going to use an ngif here, and that's also referring to a variable back in the app component that we haven't created yet. Let's create... Um, these two things. So iframe URL actually not going to be a string. It's going to be a safe resource URL, um, which we'll get to that in a second. And the other value was display iframe. Boom. And that's a Boolean set to false by default. So I'm going to do some styles here just for the purposes and now normally I would not use inline styles but I'm just going to copy and paste a bunch of stuff here. So height width is 80%, uh, Z index 20 because we want the iframe to show up on top of everything else. Um, position will be absolute and the background will be white. Um, we are also going to give this an ID, and this will just be a hard-coded value, not an Angular value. And let's add a button open iframe, because we're doing a lot of POC proof of concept around this. I'm not actually implementing integration with a full IDP. Um, normally we would wait till we know the, to the token is gone and the user is not logged in to show some form of warning in the UI that allows them to click a button to open up a either an iframe or a new window. But in this case, click on open iframe. And let's get that in here. And ah, so we're not returning anything, so void 
and that should do it. And we want a constructor in here. Now what we're going to do in the constructor is we're going to sanitizer, which is we're going to um, inject a DOM sanitizer, which is um, basically something Angular uses for cleaning up and making sure URLs work. So what we're going to do, we're going to do in this open iframe button, what we're going to do is we're going to create a relogin route. Normally we would reject, redirect to our injector service and or not, not injector, we would reject to our auth service, which would take care of integration with our IDP or other third party login system, um, SSO login system. In this case, we're just going to go pretend that happens in the background and we're not worrying about it. And we're just going to redirect to something in inside our app, a route in our app that doesn't exist yet. And iframe equals true. Uh, oh, that should. Boom. There we go. And everything should be good here. Yep. So let's do a debugger so we can see what's going on. And let's let's launch this. Oh, oh good. So I already have it running in the background. And we should see the iframe open up now. Um, but the route doesn't exist, so we'll probably see an error inside it. Uh, and so we're going to get an error, and I know exactly why, because it can't load the URL, because we don't want to use a normal URL. We want to use that sanitizer. Bypass. There we go. And reload this, open it up, and there we go. Now we're using that sanitizer. And we get the error. Cannot match URL segment relogin. So that's kind of expected. Um, and because we haven't created that route yet. So what we're going to do next, I'm going to go back to our console. Uh, that's the one where the app is running. And I'm going to do an ng generate component relogin. Let's do a dry run first. Just that looks all right to me. And now I'm going to, and we should get a relogin component. Now I'm going to open up our route. No routes set up yet, but we are about to set one up. And path uh, relogin. And component, relogin component. And so we're adding that to our routes. And that should be what we need to do. Uh, yep, I got the casing. Now, what I should have done but I didn't do. I'm going to do a component. I'll just call this other one home. And I'm going to add a uh, path. Asterisk. I think the asterisk is all we need. Component home. So and I'm going to open up the home. And I'm going to copy all this stuff from here into the home. And let's do ng on init above our custom open iframe and app component. The, re the reason I'm making these changes is because um, if we don't have this uh, router outlet, our routes will never show up. 
and I'm pretty sure that's right. Let's did it. It did look like it compiled it successfully. So if I reload, it is not loading the home component. So I am messing this up somehow. Okay, my mistake here in the path, I needed two asterisks for it to properly load. So I'm going to do that. It should rebuild. And now we have the iframe sort of showing up our relogin path. So let's go take a look at this relogin component. Uh, oh, I'm going to go ahead and re-login re successful. And I'm going to add a button here. Button click. Uh, on close. Back to app. So I'm going to go create a on close method in the relogin component. So the things you want to keep in mind here is I'm simplifying this workflow in the real world. Once again, the uh, you would actually be inside this iframe. You would relog into your authentication service, which might relog into an IDP or some type of SSO login, that's going to redirect to the login service, set a, set a cookie, and then reload your app. But we're just doing this all in an iframe. And, and for the purposes of this sample, I'm skipping that, that whole flow. So, but what we want to do, after they've done that flow, they're back in the app, they're with their work is in the background, their iframe is residing in front of it, on top of it, covering it. They've successfully logged in, so we know we have a token um, now and we want to remove their um, re close this iframe so they can continue working on their app so what we're going to do is the the main um, drawback of this approach is that I am going outside of angular instead of using angular apis so I'm accessing the window object so I'm Access, um, hitting browser specific APIs. And although though there's a way to sort of inject a the document reference inside an Angular constructor, you can't really do that with the window reference. And here we actually need a window reference. If, if we implement, if you inject a document reference, we don't get the document of the iframe. Instead, we get the parent, which is um, undesirable for our purposes. So, um, anyway, we we use the window, access, which access the parent, the document, and then we get a reference to this the login iframe. So we're, the top level login iframe is what we have access to with that frame var variable. Um, then we're going to reference the parent node, which is the thing um, that opened the iframe, and we're going to remove the iframe from it, which should give us the workflow we want. So I'm going to reload to make sure we have it. Go through the thing, our process with our SSO, external SSO. Um, iframe is all done. Click back to the app. It closes it and disappears it. And we're back in the app. And all our changes are not lost because the main app was never reloaded. And that's the whole purpose of what we're trying to implement um, with this approach. Now, if you're like me, uh, um, and the, it's entirely plausible you don't have control over your SSO or your IDP. So um, they may prevent the login screen from showing up in an iframe. That's exactly what um, I ran into when I was trying to do this on a project for a client. We want to try to avoid that. Um, so if, if that's your issue and that is a problem, you can't use this approach to solve this this workflow issue of relogging the user into your app without um, without refreshing the app and losing any unsaved changes. So um, you can do it if you open everything in a new tab. And I will go over that in my next video. But this 
whole example demonstrated, in addition to that workflow around login, that's the use case, it, how to deal with iframes inside an Angular app in case you need them. And once I use them sparingly. This is really the first time that a use case has come up where I thought iframes would be perfect for it. But really, you want to use that DOM sanitizer to um, cleanse a URL before you load it because you want to avoid any sort of cross-site scripting issues.